So our discussion today is about uh, um, Bodhicitta and the Bodhisattva. So um, we will be discussing about uh, uh, how to practice uh, Bodhicitta in our daily life. So we are going to recite the Sankhya Chusama, the uh, taking refuge and uh, um, Bodhicitta vow three times first. Um, so in every uh, virtual state that we engage, we uh, do two things, uh, a good uh, cultivation of uh, um, uh, motivation at the beginning and then dedication for benefit of all sentient beings at the end. So that's what we're going to do now. Lasso <laughs> Um, so our discussion today is about uh, discussing how we can integrate the practice of a bodhicitta um, in our daily life. Um, so um, I'm not really the uh, best candidate to talk about these. Uh, myself really still under the influences of the three afflictive emotions, um, being really enslaved by self-grasping and a self-cherishing mind. And I'm not the really best person to uh, talk about this. Yet, um, then when you think about this very you know, sacred you know, topic, the uh, very thought about the Buddha Chitta and its benefit, it's incredible opportunity that we are gathered here and to share our, um, I would say, to exchange our views on this subject. And we feel, and I feel, 
so fortunate even really to discuss about this subject. So this would be more or less like uh, exchanging our views and understanding about the bodhicitta rather than a teaching. And also, you know, we gathered here with many, you know, um, different uh, works and the different really realization of uh, uh, scholars and, uh, you know, sacred people experience. And uh, I feel um, shy and inappropriate really to be in this position to teach you in, on this subject. Inaya Ani Yodere, Sanji Jubitoni, Um, sorry, I had to interrupt, uh, uh, Kandula. Um, so um, it's really incredible when we talk about uh, a bodhicitta, um, the practice of a bodhicitta, um, then it's really immediately draw our attention to the countenance of uh, our Vajradhara, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who is really embodiment of uh, everything we talk about as a um, bodhicitta, um, his compassion, his loving kindness. And you know, he is a truly a representative of you know, the Buddhas in three times. And uh, for us, it's incredibly fortunate that we can see him, hear his teaching, and uh, you know, see you know, that how hard he's working for the benefit of all the sentient beings. And um, when he's turning the, um, uh, the will of the Dharma, um, we can, we're able to really observe it. We're able to observe this, you know, very uh, Buddhasattva in a human flesh and who's indifferent, who's inseparable 
from the nature of the uh, Vajradhara. And uh, um, so you can see how hard uh, he has been working um, for a better world, for peace in this world, um, through really relying on the power of compassion and loving kindness. Um, and he, as a, you know, um, the nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize, is very different from any other candidate because um, the power um, that he only really hold on to is uh, that of a compassion and a loving kindness and really expressing, living, and uh, uh, sharing this uh, in his teachings and activities. And that how he is really uh, bringing uh, people uh, and to really enable to form a better world. He has no country, he has no military to back him up. He has no, you know, um, the sponsors. The only power that he really he holds on to, that he rely on to, is a compassion, and that of a practice of um, bodhicitta. And so, although for us an ordinary being, um, everything that we see him for, you know, winning the Nobel Peace Prize and just spreading about the uh, work of the compassion seems like a big deal. But for his many of the activities, the, some of them are observable to us and some are not. And this is just a tiny, a fraction of uh, his activities that he is benefiting to many sentient beings. And therefore, it's incredible that we're able to witness and able to really enjoy um, his, you know, the act of a Buddha And uh, also, he's like a Buddha himself, you know, coming to this world and teaching the very essence the, uh, of the, the Buddha's you know, uh, doctrine. It's a dependent origination, the Demdi, and really through um, disseminating, through um, showing how you know, things exist, how we can really look at you know, um, the, you know, the realities uh, through this really concept about the dependent originations. And many people are able to get a deeper uh, in a sense of who they are and deeper in touch with it themselves. And uh, so looking at some of these, really the wonders and of the um, works of the His Holiness the Dalai Lama, sometimes you wonder whether do we really uh, have an opportunity in the future to meet or you know, someone in his really capacity and the form would appear again. Nasso Rangi Tunda la Chichu, Marie Tunda Chigori, Sungudu, De Candis in Chigori, Jenny, that Tobo Mumu de Yobaja. Chesan De Indu, the only Tane Kajurumazo Chanju Sim Lana, the December de Jachin Bodang, and the December de Ding Sabo, and the Kuyang Bodzi, Nichi de Hamahoina, and Jedangi, Semazango. Rodan Zamji and Changju Sim Layaji, Parchin Tug Yamneji Laya that this is the Bekaleka wins a roller. I mean, that's all Changju Sim Namju, that my Chavin, Tung Dutinella, Mashi, Tinde, Dajin Yamji, Lasso Wagi, Tachimu, Tiju, Yuva Sungzang, Tizudilla, Yamjip Chip, and Lavartula. That's a Susu Mizi in Zang, me Namjuti, she left the Betachim Redoa. Tisungza So um, when we um, talk about uh, Bodhisattva or Bodhicitta and how we can integrate this in our daily life, um, we could not stop thinking about the very concept about uh, Bodhicitta 
in Tibetan Changchu. The very, you know, composition of this Buddhichitta in Tibetan, the connotation is very profound and incredibly expansive. The Chang, you know, there's so many different texts on this, and the Chu, you know, there are many um, the layers of uh, uh, explanations for this very, you know, a single syllabus. And then now thinking about how we can in integrate this into our daily life, it's a really a uh, challenge. Um, so many people wonder, you know, how can we, how can I put, you know, this uh, concept about the Buddhicitta into my daily uh, life? And uh, um, so this is, you know, a, a question often uh, we get from uh, our fellow practitioners. And uh, <clears throat> so when I think about uh, Buddhicitta, the first thing really come to my mind is uh, this is a huge, it's a expensive, you know, um, the very thought, you know, um, this cheetah mind itself, this is a huge, limited, expansive, you know, a form of, you know, a thinking. Um, that's the first thing. And uh, without really appreciating and understanding, this is a really expansive, you know, concept, expansive and very powerful uh, force of mind. Without understanding that, then one cannot really practice the uh, six perfections, um, including uh, generosity and so on. And uh, so the very nature of a bodhicitta is inclusive. It's a, you know, uh, it's an embodiment of a, um, something really um, limitless, uh, expansive. Um, so understanding that is helpful. And secondly, then there are many ways of uh, really practicing, really training our mind uh, toward this expansive uh, mind, um, including the practice of the uh, seven uh, causes and results of uh, um, the practice of a bodhicitta, um, and then relying on um, uh, really kind of our sharp wisdom, really using this uh, uh, human intelligence to uh, analyze, to meditate and be analytical uh, to develop uh, bodhicitta. There are very systematic uh, teachings for that. Um, so when you're really looking at and relying on our really sharp intelligence and to revisit this concept about bodhicitta, um, then we can find out the problems associated with the self-cherishing thought. Uh, if you look really uh, critically, and then you will see many faults, the layers of really the weakness in self-cherishing thought. And then, uh, as you know, um, the message from the uh, Bodhisattva's you know, practices, taking care of uh, others, <clears throat> taking care of the larger, really um, the communities. And then you, if you look critically, then you start seeing this huge benefit for doing so. And uh, um, so uh, with that, then you're really building this a very solid foundation of uh, um, engaging, integrating, practicing the learning, uh, the bodhicitta, the practice of a bodhisattva, because you have this incredibly um, strong reasons based on your critical thinking and looking and examining this very concept about the bodhicitta and how this can really transform and uh, bring benefit to limitless sentient beings. Um, so in this kind of area, using analytical meditation is very helpful. Chava Karazi Chivaina, and eh, G. Tashibe, Chava Karazi Chivana, Rang Jeva, Jem Pamba, Tapar Dola, Ta rings and over the Chivaina, Susui, Jacob, Ne Jacob, Ne Chimzang, Ne Bugu, Narang, Pem, Missy Chabjung, the sympathy Joe was she was in the and some sweet in Dinizir. This samsu de pe changbore mi da ani samsu chik la nga cha chimbo yi nga la to ge yi ani nga la lop chung yi nga la chik yi tun jin yong su zo ba nga rang rang ge che jo yi nga rang yi jene su 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 la ka wo ka chang da zi dang 
ปันดาวดังคาริจูโรจิเอ่อจินติดอ่ะจิโลติชุดจูดอ่ะสัมจูติเนจิเรวะนีตังติคาริเรจิบายินะงะซูนีตังติจัมบลิงติคอลาจิ
um, uh, between you know the um, focusing yourself and others and then you would also realize and a lot of the uh, thoughts about ourselves uh, you know our things about our you know home uh, myself and so on and they you know derives it's rooted if you like uh, in uh, delusion um, it rooted in the groundless um, a bit like you know kind of a confusion um, but then on the other hand if you look at the benefit of really expanding your um, you know love and compassion for um, other you know um, people um, uh, then really start thinking about the interest of the others you immediately come to almost like a realization that all other sentient beings you know um, they're all in you know, a desire for happiness none of the sentient beings really um, desire for um, suffering and uh, having this really understanding because this is something when you critically examine you will realize that that all sentient beings um, regardless of their shapes and forms desire for happiness um, none of them really desire for suffering and once you really realize that then you really start looking um, and start changing how you see uh, other beings and you start seeing them just like my you know brothers just sisters just like my parents and uh, um, you know uh, the reason is that uh, we are you know thinking and feeling close to our parents uh, because you know they care for us like it was when you start really caring for others and you feel closer to them and they feel closer to you that's you know um, one you know solid reasons and uh, um, so as you really start looking that way then you also would realize that we are living on this planet as a you know like a family because there's a one planet that we are all sharing right now and just like a house you know everyone's really um, living uh, together in this uh, house and so um, as we live you know like a brothers and sisters um, then you know we created the necessary or the corresponding the dependent originations really started you know impacting each other uh, taking care of each other but um, if not um, because the thing I'm using we're all living in this uh, one planet you know the planet earth because and I said we're living like a um, family in the same house why I'm saying that we're sharing the same space or in you know, the same you know uh, sky we're sharing the same earth we're sharing the same air and we're sharing the same water so just like any other you know household we're sharing this you know really important element that's really uh, we need to survive and therefore really with you know realizing that there's so many things we have to share together and that's where we're living the same planet. And then when you try to create these uh, um, divisions between my friends, my enemies, um, it's really very harmful. And uh, um, you know, usually we have the tendency to get attached to our beloved one. We identify them something that we beloved, and we get attached. And then we have you know hatreds and unpleasant feelings and thinking toward others. We consider them as um, um, enemies and uh, um, this really uh, is uh, becoming you know the uh, main problems um, and the causes of the problem that we are going through in today's world uh, with that in mind then I'm thinking how can I really practice um, bodhicitta um, in a way so that I'm, I would be able to overcome this two extreme um, uh, you know the uh, thought uh, attachment to you know the people I consider as my you know beloved uh, members and then uh, anger and hatred toward people that I uh, go against or disagree with them and so to overcome that we have to deal with these two um, the, uh, emotional afflictions <laughs> Taji, Zangburian de La so was some law, Semji, teen shut up, in but the dog or a chitam. And this is a Nimba ye churn, gang a rig some law, and so so in Zimba ye so you have a dee, dog or a depiction. 
Um, therefore, um, this is useful and it's important to think, um, looking at all the wonderful qualities, the good qualities that we all enjoy in ourselves. And if you think about it, this really comes from a kindness, from a gift from other people. And if you look at the problems, our weakness, you know, our stress and the things that we, you know, have a challenge. And when you look at these mentalities, these, you know, uh, qualities, they're mostly uh, derived from this uh, strong uh, self-cherishing thought. Um, so that's two uh, you really need to examine. So, Samnugi, Juba Dandang, Layatang, and the Chick Susugi, Dubatar, Mayuma de Nang Sudan, Nisudin, the Gendu Chavi Tony, and Dubatar, Yungamidon, Yungu Marva, the Insanding Masuji, Chick Susugi, Nang Sula, and Susu Shivita, Suji, the name of Oajida, Chick Cassina Harshiva and Dame of Oaj, Nisuzi Mobut, Nang Suzi Chadido. で、そんざん人生の待てなんかそこから感じてさくれ。とろ感じてくんとくれ。でなんかそう全部感じてとくれ。さ、ロは人生の天国は。ラム、ランガゾニーでそう人間。まそこからいじ、ジョゾニーでそう人間。人
这个是我们的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人
are due to the, you know, like a contribution and the kindness of other sentient beings. And uh, um, if you examine this uh, in the past, present, the future, that a lot of the you know, wealth, a lot of the enjoyment that we um, really have the luxury to experience, it uh, uh, comes from um, kindness and the contribution of other uh, sentient beings. Um, so understanding this, I think the uh, process is very important for learning and practicing um, good uh, Jita. And therefore, like uh, um, this very thought about compassion, you know, we think compassion is amazing quality. But if you think carefully, this very, you know, incredible quality, the compassion, the basis of Bodhicitta and many other wonders, the qualities, is actually derived from other sentient beings. Because really, uh, feeling their experiences, what they're going through, really placing yourself in others, others shoes and you're really uh, deriving this um, in the thought the compassion so this very you know thought about bodhicitta the compassion is also not self-produced but really due to the kindness of other sentient beings and um, so this i think uh, uh, realization and the practice is very uh, useful uh, when we talk about um, the practice in bodhicitta um, and therefore, um, what is the benefit of, you know, uh, the attachment and the hatred? And there isn't, um, because this, you know, attachment and the hatred, uh, the emotions, they're not going to help us for this life. They're not going to help us in our future life. Realizing that everything um, that we accomplish, that we would accomplish, that we had, you know, accomplished is really coming from other sentient beings. And then try to, you know, differentiate peace between friends, enemy, it's really not uh, realistic and logical. Um, so um, what you know, uh, we're seeing is sometimes we get these really strong um, emotions against particular individuals and we see them totally dark and we see nothing um, you know, uh, positive about these individuals. Um, we all get these kind of uh, you know, experiences. But if you examine very carefully, this very thought, the biased thought, is derived from, of course, biased thought, and it comes from, you know, attachment and um, uh, anger. It, it comes from, you know, that in turn comes from this uh, uh, perverted, you know, uh, uh, conception, the pervert, perverted, you know, um, views, uh, the confused views about, you know, the reality. Um, if you think about this really um, negative person that you totally see um, negative and really think on the other hand, think expansively, this very person that you have so much you know, resent, resentment has the same um, the Buddha nature that you claim or you feel have. Um, this very particular person that you, you know, have so much strong emotions um, have the same qualities that you aspire you know, uh, in others. Uh, you aspire in the um, enlightened you know, uh, beings and uh, really examine this very carefully. And then you realize this is like a biased, uh, you know, the uh, emotions coming based on this uh, negative you know, uh, uh, conception. It's wrong. They don't have any solid ground looking, you know, many different um, areas. And with these, what we're leading to is really to understand producing the corresponding and the correct causes. This will enable you to um, gain uh, bodhicitta. And it's very um, important. And uh, this is because uh, um, when you really want to produce the corresponding um, the causes for your bodhicitta, and you really have to go you know, much deeper uh, than just merely dealing with emotion, the, including you know, changing your perception. Um, because uh, um, once we have the wrong perception about uh, you know, others, both beings and object, and then this will lead to um, the mistaking, uh, you know, like uh, uh, emotions, the mistaking views, and leading to mistaking actions. 
Um, so um, seeing um, you know the uh, things properly. Um, in Buddhism, we talk about the nantu and the netu. Nantu is a perception. Netu is the kind of uh, um, realistic uh, uh, ground or the reality. Um, so we simply use example when you look at a perception about a person and you're thinking that person is a solid there it's you know like uh, almost there without any causes inherently exist as a result you know you either in love or hate to this person because you don't see um, the realistic you know uh, situation about the person and then if you this you know like a uh, uh, wrong perceptions the uh, perceptions the person are coming from uh, not the wisdom but coming from the uh, confused state of mind. But then if you rely on you know, your wisdom, your intelligent kind of uh, thought, you will immediately realize that that person there is uh, not intrinsically or inherently exist, but you know, through many layers of causes and conditions and dependent originations. And when you really see how this very person that you uh, conceive at the beginning later you start seeing almost like emptiness in that and that you start seeing that a person it is depends on so many conditions and factors and that it is in a very perception about the solid person is merely a projection of your mind and when you see that and then which will really now clearing your mind if you like from this confused state of mind really seeing clearly what we call the seeing the reality and with that, then it will help you to you know, look, um, apply the same concept to all the sentient beings. And then you're really now working against the biased thought. Um, so this is, I think, a, a very important. Um, if our you know, practice of compassion and loving kindness is not led or guided by wisdom, um, although there are compassion and there are you know, uh, loving kindness, but the consequences or the impact is very different. When the compassion and the loving kindness and that is guided by you know, wisdom, uh, it's you know, become very expansive. You know, it's not only while practicing that very compassion, not only it really help you to generate compassion, but also help you to enhance your practice of wisdom. Uh, as a result, by practicing the compassion guided by the wisdom, you know, the practice itself to lead you or realization of the perfect wisdom and emptiness and so on. And your practice of the compassion that's become the uh, perfect practices. Um, so that's, I think, uh, um, it's very important um, because otherwise sometimes uh, I attend conferences and the people draw kind of a simple uh, comparison saying, oh, the practice of the generosity, practice of the um, you know, disciplines, the practice of uh, um, uh, mindfulness or practice of a generosity, they're all, you know, same uh, for all the uh, spiritual uh, followers. People, you know, draw this simple conclusion. Um, but um, I feel there's a clear um, like a boundary between the, uh, these compassions and the practices of the six perfections or the six, you know, activities um, guided by wisdom and just like uh, guided uh, without wisdom. And there's a clear differences, uh, differences in terms of the impact, in terms of how you know, this very practice um, encompass uh, many other things. For example, if you practice compassion guided by wisdom, not only it enable you generate this incredible, you know, compassion, the power, the um, merit, at the same time, this very practice leads you to uh, really cut the knot of uh, uh, ignorance. Uh, because your compassion practice is guided by that uh, wisdom, right? And uh, um, if you uh, continue to do that, not only this very practice of the compassion is, you know, like uh, enabling your practice of a bodhicitta, but also directly working to free us from samsara. Whereas then other practices of compassion, not guided by similar wisdom, may be, you know, a use. Of course, it's a good thing to practice. Of course, there's some uh, impact but not as expansive as we uh, talk here. And uh, ultimately, in a simple conclusion, practice of the compassion without you know, the proper wisdom cannot really free ourselves or others from samsara. 
And therefore, you know, our practices of a Buddhist has to be guided by the practices or the proper uh, wisdom. ドワイヨンスソバラゲンセケナデサマロマソナイジデワデグエレドゲンデグエマレデワデグエレデデウジュアニチュケバジュラソバイジエコルプチャパンチャスシグエマレドゲンデグエマレデラゲランドゲネモ
Tangazola Di matrava seju yoba tong and tekarangi, kola kandisene, kule lo shigre, ninja jegroa. Di shedang di ngola, dasha shedang di nyumu yi ngola, kipo meva de soso hagoroa. Dungi yoba de soso hagori. Di sonsan ko dungi dia lovro yimba de hagosoanda. Di da di jenti undu seba chena, kandesa chimbo seedu. Rangi mil chikene. Mamba Zamu tomba niji chue tamji ta mebi ni su ngani paro tu chimba di pechu chiba ina su su ye chie tu gure wa di kala su su ye berzun chie tu gure berzun mare pe misi teni kangi chiu na kagi re kain se na chimba tiring su ba se se aji koka bra arba su su lenge dikdip chang ya aji su su la koka bra gi doa an ying chie chie gi doa ane chanju gi sem chie aji chiu do gi doa Hama Simjan Tamji, Tinin Sugudoa. This song song, Katsi Gang in Chivaina, Tizzi Ye, Ning Dob Jagidoa. Didn't you know that? Not Suzuki, she up touching with the picture down she would do. Then you did to another, gain to me being an. The kid in Mazin with Tony, Susu Juno Longu de Savaina. Anne Loy Padawaina, Kazoro, Jig Chaji, Sidra, the Yerimado. Nangla Kogi Nangla Zimba Yumari Chapi Lodi Yumari Padali Zimba Yutizora Zorma de Quarish Kazoro called Zimba de Yumari Rangi Matuba Tonzo Kang Rang Luda Lunju Gerza Tu Sumla Simjan Tamjene Simjan Korangi Kam Deshik Nimbo Sim Tartu T Moshea Dang Titoya Chidula Bugoya Zidang Ani chego ya cha de do. Da di che di su su kawa ro wa ina. Le ga le cha wa kar si che wa ina. Kang ye che ya yo ma re kang ye che na. Tablam shi ra pe ju dang na se pa che ya. Ani kar ju ro la sam che ya ning je che ya ning do che ya. Sem shu mian na mian yo ma ro ba. Ma su sem shu mian kan de si yong go re. Dang zi zin ba. Ak tu me ba la tak tu zi. Timber meva la timber zi di chingi ngani tini chaju sem che chu me do khatam chikam nga ya ko yunga sho nga la chilam na ro che nga su su pe me si chu ba ri ba he sung jang ni re cho na na chanju gi sem la ya de yang san ji jom din di ji ma din ji sung yang ju di ya bu ji zi tini di tini Temba ni kala, tu kumbaji, kunzop temba dan, tundam temba kala, kumbaji. 
미지 이게 내가 있는 자 자와 가르치 있는 군접 댐바 디가라 탑대로와 군접 댐바라 해디 준바르와 준바리 가인세나 랑지 마주 바인 자는 거 준바리 유럽 랑지 동해 외 랑지 준바들이더라 준발라 류드나라 장애 여 말이 세계여 말이 고 장애 여래 장애 남도 용수 쪽바 디 마추심이 랑지 디가라 댐여 말와 대성자는 군접 댐바 전담 댐바 니기 띵니 최켈레나 말레나 배지 추거나 전담배 최 친앙이 최 문이 니가래 랑지인데 내니 군접 댐배 니 중간에 전어를 약수디 랑지보 마인바 타입이 쌤젠 탐질라 개인첸보 크루첸보 시디 대야 장보 용야 내주 상물로 집보 용야 이체더라 개인지 개다 데리 교체서다 데리 닝제서다 데리 떡체서 미도아 고맙습니다. 고맙습니다. So when we think about the self-cherishing thought um, and uh, thinking about other sentient beings, and there are many ways you can really easily get a um, conclusive uh, decision. I start with the numbers, you know, thinking about oneself is just one single entity, right? Think about the benefit of all sentient beings. The number is uh, mega, countless. Um, that's, I think, uh, by kind of uh, uh, numbers, um, it's so obvious, you know, the benefit of uh, thinking for oneself or thinking others, the impact is uh, huge. And uh, um, then think about, you know, other sentient beings, you start thinking, Many families, many nations, uh, you know, many uh, uh, different beings in different realms, and uh, uh, countless, you know, uh, such beings. And why are we think about them? Because you know, um, they all desire for happiness, and they're all trying to free from suffering. And then why then we should care? Because we know they all desire for happiness. We know that you know that I know. They all you know try to free themselves. You know that, I know that, what's the point? The point is this, um, although uh, all the sentient beings wanted to free themselves from sufferings, but the problem is they do not know how to do it. And although they have a strong desire uh, to free themselves from suffering, but they are not able to, they are not in a position to do that. And uh, as a result, instead of uh, freeing further from suffering, they keep drawing back to the very you know, suffering state. That they start with and they're constantly going cycle in that and uh, don't you feel compassion uh, to them because knowing that they all desire for happiness but all we see around us is they're all experiencing suffering and they're producing the causes which will uh, extend their suffering and you don't see the end to that and seeing that and then you're saying, why now I have to go there and help and think about other uh, sentient beings? Um, without a really kind of a teaching them, without any form of training, they'll not be able to do or to free themselves from suffering. And this, I think, is the reason why we're practicing compassion, simply because the beings are not really, in many ways, able to um, you know, uh, free themselves from uh, suffering. Um, for example, we are so used to you know, our suffering, and we have so many trains, the trainings from generation, from life to life, we have this training to um, produce suffering. So we, the evidence is you don't have to teach anywhere to engage in bad habit. And then, you know, teaching some patient the practice of the patience, teaching someone the practice of the generosity, teaching someone for the compassion is a such hard work. This is a very example that we have been so used to, so kind of a, a propelling, a automatic, you know, propelling in the suffering. We don't have to teach. That's where we have to now teach them and reverse their course of action. Um, so that's the reason. And then um, um, another wonderful thing. Um, um, I mean, this is a true power 
uh, it's incredible, you know, the power is a trait to take responsibility for all sentient beings. Now think about that. Is there any other comparison or the comparative thought trying to take the responsibilities of all sentient beings on yourself? Think about yourself, who you are now, what makes you this person? And that's, you know, it only comes with the practice of a Bodhicitta. Thinking about this, I'm going to take responsibility for all sentient beings. They're all my job. They're all my responsibility now. And I'm going to work for their happiness. And this incredible, you know, powerful thought um, would really uh, make us um, uh, very uh, special. And, uh, but the bad news is that that doesn't come merely by praying, merely having that wish that I'm taking responsibility for all sentient beings. It doesn't come, uh, doesn't accomplish by merely praying or having this wish, but you really have to work uh, towards that. And uh, um, so um, how you to work is really incorporating, having this vision, doing things for all sentient beings, and then incorporate that, creating the corresponding causes in your daily life. And uh, um, really uh, start thinking that, you know, um, I think good way of really uh, started this practice is uh, really look at the uh, real nature of a phenomenon and thinking that all phenomena are you know composed or produced with the many conditions and the factors dependent on origination and that our true nature you know the buddha nature it's you know devoid of any of these you know, afflictions these afflictions are merely projection merely a stain uh, on our mind stream but they're not the actual you know nature of the mind they just a simple stand, a temporary, uh, and uh, um, with you know the proper trainings, we can remove this. And now knowing that this you know very affliction that we're fighting itself, uh, you know it's become um, when you analyze them, they dissolve, right? And knowing that, and think about this to yourself: my attachment, my angers within a correct practice of the wisdom, I can dissolve it, I can eradicate it. Likewise, all the sentient beings, they, if giving up proper training and uh, opportunities and uh, situations and so on, they can also um, eradicate their attachment, their um, anger, which produces, you know, so many suffering. But they're not able to do that. They're not able to even know this huge secret. And that, again, another reason why we should feel compassion to these sentient beings, because all the stains, all the uh, attachment and anger and so on, the negative emotions, they are removable. They're just a merely stain projection with the correct ingredients and wisdoms, you can easily remove them. And, but they're not able to even realize that. And think of that in a state and think about how you can help them. And this is you know, what you know, uh, compassion, the practice of bodhicitta, compassion comes about. And, uh, um, you know, merely thinking about it, it's like uh, um, all the sentient beings, they're not really permanently there, they're not a self-established entity, but rather, you know, product of causes and, you know, uh, conditions. And look at, you know, like uh, our own and others alive in this samsara that we all go through birth, uh, aging, illness, and the death. And that itself, you know, is undeniable uh, evidences that we are not a concrete, you know, a, a being. That everything um, that we go through um, has a, um, so many, you know, like a conditions and the factors. And then on the other hand, knowing the Buddha nature, you know, this uh, uh, Dharma Dhatu, the despair of the, you know, um, uh, the pure experiences or pure realization, and that is totally free of all of these stains, the emotions. And knowing this, and then which will ins get inspiration for us and for others to strive for um, really uh, seeing that. So introducing the sentient beings that the you know um, perceptions that uh, the conceptions the perceptions that they have is uh, incorrect. They are really perverted in Buddhist term, and to really uh, just tangle that very you know thought um, in itself. Uh, would enable them to free from samsara. And uh, we say 
in the knowing or realizing your true nature of the mind it itself is you know a liberation it itself you know, in one way or form will enable us to and become us closer to liberation likewise we have to teach the sentient beings and with this kind of you know thinking then uh, the benefit for us is we become less attached to people that we think are you know beloved as uh, family members we get a less anger at you know people that we uh, have a, a negative you know uh, viewpoint and with that then you know our afflictions declining uh, uh, receding uh, at the same time uh, you know we are uh, creating um, the proper uh, the merits and practices um, so and then the next one is uh, knowing this the true the nature of the phenomena which is really the dependent origination everything is interdependent but there's no intrinsic nature in uh, whether beings or in uh, object and knowing that and then if you practice um, you know uh, wisdom if you practice the patience so on and you know bodhicitta your practice you know becomes very you know powerful and it also has you know this with this proper and the guided with the proper uh, wisdom um you know the your um the uh the speed of the practice also you know differs it will really enable you um become a very uh, fast you know um, uh, step toward uh, uh, our enlightenment and uh, um, so when you really do these kind of practices you look for opportunities you look for you know like uh, situations where you can practice these and knowing now you know how we do this how we think and uh, with this you know, how you really incorporate your and the practice of a bodhicitta in your daily life and then i wanted to emphasize again think about this i'm going to liberate all sentient beings from samsara i'm taking responsibilities for all sentient beings. Again, think about that. that all, uh, there's no better, you know, like a thought. There's no more powerful, you know, uh, uh, vision than this, you know, simple thinking. I wanted to help enable all sentient beings, free themselves from, you know, suffering. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to spend every single minute of my life toward accomplishing that. And when you do that, then that's, I think, it's really make you a very amazing and incredibly, you know, powerful being. And, uh, and then the good, you know, side, the good side effect uh, with that is uh, uh, you always, you know, become uh, inspired. Uh, you really don't have time to feel depressed. And uh, uh, when you think it that way, you know, what is there that you have to be uh, afraid of? You know what is there that you have to um, feel uh, frightened about because you're doing this not for yourself but to all the sentient beings and when you have this kind of uh, um, you know uh, inspirations and you are always you know courageous you're always you know inspiring because you're doing this for all sentient beings and as you do that and it also uh, you realize that it's working against the self-cherishing thought I guess, you know, this uh, um, self grasping mind. And uh, so everything that we wanted to abandon, right? And with that kind of a vision, and when you're using this wisdom and doing things for others, with it guided by the proper wisdom, and uh, your practice is basically becoming this very powerful, which really receding all your negative, you know, qualities and uh, really thriving your positive. Uh, um, um, positive um, qualities and with that then you know um, also think about this uh, four noble truth um, really thinking about this four noble truth with this you know wisdom and uh, um, seeing that all phenomena are lacking this intrinsic nature you know inherited nature about everything is you know produced with this in working of the dependent origination and uh, now try to apply this for all sentient beings even when you practice the full noble truth you do this not for yourself but for others really bring them into your practice and through that way then i think your practice of a bodhicitta will become powerful and meaningful <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to remind the candela. I was told to remind the candela to stop at 7.30, but I got carried away. 
And uh, I reminded the counselor, she said, okay, let me think about the question myself. ハコドアディチェジンイバディタマディドゥニウランジンイバディニセハコナアンコチェジンチェジンロンジュタダシネジギドアゴグリガツズゴティビヨバインサニディラトクタムカリナディツォヤチドゴグドアズゴティチェジ
speak. She said, now we will try to answer questions. So I'll stop here. Oh. <laughs> um, I apologize because I'm reminded by our host. Um, so um, when you really think about this amazing power of uh, you know, bodhicitta, and uh, um, so look back you know, now, having this really realization about the power of the bodhicitta, taking responsibilities for all sentient beings, transforming yourself from the single entity, but become the sources of a benefit for all sentient beings in different realms, right? And then with that, if you look at our world, you know, then we see that everything that we experience, you know, kind of goes down, it sort of ends in miserable situation. You know, life itself, you know, uh, end up with the death. Um, the, any pleasure that we pursue, eventually it leads us to a much bigger problem. And uh, wherever you look in samsara, that everything seems like a, a, um, you know, deceptive, but uh, ending in kind of a sadness. And uh, knowing that, and then if you really think about our practices, really things, you know, guided by wisdom, practicing this bodhicitta for benefit of all sentient beings. And then you can see how meaningful now we are, our life, where other people pursue, you know, the gains for this samsara, um, you know, career, uh, earning wealth, and so on. Eventually, it goes down, you know, ourselves is being nature of impermanence, die or decay, and so on. The very kind of wealth and the pleasures that we go after itself collapses. And but then think about this uh, power of bodhicitta, this very you know, aspiration. It survives, and uh, as you practice, this very aspiration grows, and your activity you know become more expansive. You know it's become kind of uh, uh, pervasive, you know, reaching more and more people. And the more and the longer we go with this, you know, really practices, the more gain, almost like the more happiness now we are gaining. Because really doing things benefit of all the sentient beings, and this brings the benefit to more people. It's expansive, you know, and it's really kind of uh, transforms our own entity becoming just a, you know, like a one stakeholder. Now it's become, you know, stakeholding for all the beings. So, you know, it's always progresses. It always increase. It's always beginning expansive, which is the very opposite in nature of a samsara. And so that kind of uh, um, benefit we have to think. And then think about, although, you know, we enjoy in our sensory pleasures, uh, you know, visions, you know, the good smell, good taste, and so on. But uh, then at the end of the day, before you fall asleep, everything has become memory. But basically, they all goes back to your mind and uh, um, nothing else to show. Uh, but when you think about, you know, the compassion, the loving kindness, and the, um, the wisdom, the correct wisdom, or the perfect wisdom, um, the actions, the life that you lived, guided by these, and when you back, there are so many impacts, you're really kind of uh, giving, and it's growing by days. And it's never kind of uh, be defeated, it's not really defeatable. Um, so that's where I really think, and when you think about the bodhicitta practices, think this kind of, you know, uh, give this kind of a perspective. And then you see the uh, true value of uh, um, uh, bodhicitta. And I kept um, emphasizing the practice or the guided by the correct wisdom, because this is really important. When we practice compassion, when we practice, you know, this uh, responsibility, the universal responsibilities, it has to be guided by the correct wisdom. And without that, then, you know, the uh, act itself becomes limited. Um, sometimes, you know, do people practice, you know, they, you know, endure hardship and they go through, you know, many, um, you know, the endurances in their spiritual practices, but not because, you know, because they were guided not by the uh, correct wisdom. Uh, what happens eventually, you either get burst or you become break down as someone who's really practicing uh, patience, for example. Uh, the practice of the patient, not led by the wisdom, it's become like if you, you're enduring. Basically, what you do is you're enduring this hardship, but without you know, further you know, wisdoms and 
things to see at the end of the tunnel. But eventually, you become burned, you become burst. And it's basically become a, just a, another way of uh, torturing yourself. But then when your practices of a patient's generosity, uh, meditation, the samadhi, and so on, when it's led by wisdom, and then you know it kind of grows. And the more you engage in the practices, the more you grow, rather than being burst, you really even shine out of it. And it's become um, undi undefeatable or indefeatable. Um, so that's why I always say, you know, Buddhist practitioners, they're very clever, they're very smart. Um, when they practice compassion, they're very smart way of practicing compassion. When they practice, you know, bodhicitta or any, you know, the qualities of enlightened beings, the causes of enlightened beings, they're very smart and a very smart practitioner, in short. Um, with that, then you see, once you really took on this responsibility and taking responsibility of all sentient beings, practicing compassion, practicing the correct wisdom, and uh, with that, then you're seeing that yourself become the, the sole beneficiary of all sentient beings. We become you know, the source of the benefit for all sentient beings. And uh, um, with that, our lives become meaningful, but and uh, our activities become expansive, limitless, you name it. But on the other hand, if you just focus in your life on yourself, it's a miserable, it's a very narrow minded life. So that's the differences. And now um, I have to ask, take questions, and I'll take questions from you now. That's all. Um, so, if you have any questions, and Chivachi Narana, Jive. Sorry. Is that better? Yeah. Um, I'm, I struggle to formulate this question a little bit, but um, sometimes it feels for me. When I think about bodhicitta, it's it's beautiful, but then if I take it to its end, it becomes maybe something boring, like enlightenment is is in the end some boring state of forever helping other beings for the, an infinite amount of time. You know, sometimes I don't want to go there. You know, so thank you. Um, Frankie, can you send the uh, the time taking something more, right? Da <laughs> yes, um, I mean, you can, you know, view that way, you can even experience that, you know, it could be boring. But the main thing is that this is an ordinary um, view. But then once you attain enlightenment, your chant, your <laughs> view itself will change. Dita Well, um, so uh, yes, um, I think in our ordinary, uh, you know, perceptions and experiences, sometimes we feel that way. But once you really attain enlightenment, um, the experience is different. You may have different views. This is because right now, in our um, ordinary, uh, you know, perception, we really don't have the true. Um, 
the uh, empathy, the true, we really, we might have uh, intellectually understood compassion, but we really have not uh, realized the true, you know, compassion in our mind stream. And that's where you feel that way. Um, but even in Jiangchup, the uh, Bodhi in uh, Tibetan, um, as I mentioned right at the beginning, it has uh, so many different texts, different connotations, the meaning is very, you know, Jiangchu, uh, the term used for Bodhicitta has so many qualities. It's really kind of uh, describing so many qualities. And uh, when you really meditate and think about these qualities, naturally it all uh, arises um, faith and, you know, devotions in you. And especially once you attain enlightenment, and when you are able to free sentient beings from the uh, suffering, you know, from a samsara, when you see an individual, when you see this individual freed from the suffering, the torment, you know, experience samsara, and when you see that delight in that individual, and then when you feel that way, how can this be boring? But rather you be, you know, like you be, it wouldn't be boring, it would be really uh, any kind of, uh, unpleasant experience, but the seeing truly, when you relieve someone from this um, suffering, when you see the appreciation, when you see that, you know, reaction, uh, your experience, your reaction will be totally different from what you think now. Sanji Dishinachesaro. Um, saying thank you is such an excellent question. Um, when you think about our precious human birth, you know, this is a rare gift that we all have. If we don't, you know, use this, when we had the opportunity to study this great wisdom, profound wisdom, uh, we had this opportunity to meet the Vajradhara, the Buddha, in real flesh. Uh, we have all these instructions to attain uh, enlightenment within this very lifetime. And the practice of bodhicitta, compassion, and uh, wisdom, uh, emptiness, so on. If we don't really use this very precious, you know, uh, life toward, you know, attaining this enlightenment, incredible, you know, in enlightenment, with all of these, you know, conditions, the right conditions and opportunities we had. And if we die without doing that, and then what happens is once you die, you will continue to reborn in um, the tech lives in samsara, and you constantly uh, migrating from one life to the next, and uh, yourself really experiencing further sufferings because of our confusion, because of our ignorance, because of our afflictions, we keep causing ourselves like so many are self-inflicted in the pains and as we continue and when you think about that then you get scared and oh my god i really have to free myself from something i have to attain this enlightenment so think about what if i don't do that you know um what if i you know really die without utilizing all these great opportunities and knowledges the consequence is really lethal it's really scary and uh, um and therefore, meditating on this will also help you, uh, you know, uh, see the urgency and the importance of uh, attaining um, enlightenment for benefit of all the sentient beings. 
But your question is really great. Thank you. Um. Thank you. Kandrula, thank you for being here. Um, I, I'm thinking of something that I think is very connected to Bodhicitta in the end. And that is that um, my Lama is always saying to me, <clears throat> you know, your yidam is the highest aspect of your own mind. Um, and you know, your Lama is the highest aspect of your own mind and your Bodhicitta is the highest aspect. <clears throat> but then, you know, the reverse of that <laughs> is that the child abuser is an aspect of my own mind because it's appearing in my reality. And my child, when they're mad at me or upset with me, is an aspect in some way of my own karma, of my own mind. And, you know, it does sort of break me down in, into a kind of compassion. That today we're reading about, you know, terrible bombing in the Ukraine that has left people dying in floods. The world is terribly tragic and the suffering is truly um, unbearable. So I, I want to ask also from that sort of Mahamudra view, um, when we see something as, you know, one taste, as the appearances of samsara, of nirvana, just appearances and that that underlying awareness is that Buddha nature. I, I, I often wish, and this is why I'm brave enough to ask this question of you, what, how can we imagine that, that precious thing? Can you bless us with that? Thank you. Um, Tangarazo, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Tangbani 
Tene rangi nyamlenche. Tongko tue bache. Tene kale kale samjung yu khoa. Gomjung khoa. Tene zue jie chen. Zoha chen. Tene zue me kala lep dru du. Tene kale la. Sim di dele charu charu sim raji. Bese wa la ne ya. Rona ngato sanga sanga la ya jido wa. Di chongwa la wa. Sim raji yose wa che. Chanju sim tongba nyin di. Tene dare. Zongdae chi ne kari yu me te. De ni zongju ki ni su yunga ne. Tumo mangyi bi kechu yu te su de. De ni lai nien jo. Mata wa lu takpa gom yu anda. Ani nga mata wa yi mata wa laya te takpa gom da anda. Ani korwa. Takpa. Ta mata yi ni su ka ni yin ba song zang. De ni takpa kari yin ba. Ma zo tanda yi chul ba dang zi yi jing za ne. Ta mata ka la. Ta ta chue re yung ngay kore yu mar ba. Sangno dega rang kore re, oh, konde chang ma lo wa, de dong re sha, ni na, tang po konde chang ma, nang dong ma do na, de dong do ya yue ma re wa. Nang wa kawa yi na, nang wa dong ba. Nang dong yi ni chung ngani kale shi song wa na, de ni, di, chang ju sim dong yi da wa de ni de, de ni, chula chu ja na ji, ro jik ni chung ngani, tama ro jik ni chung ngani, ane, Konde ye me la ya ta te tong ta ta hang dar di ni ya za chir chir de yin za ni ane de na yi yi jie rim dang zong rim yu jie ni zi te 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 ko ane sabru 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 do ya zi ro te song zang tan da yi dang zi na gui jiu me wa jie jie rang jin zi na gui jiu me wa jie chang jian da zong jian da da ni ba shi ba za chin bu di di sung wa yin na za chin bu shi bu re da ba ge wa sang bu su ma do wa yin na tue wa zang bu jie Zambi bèm mè si pa cha cha hang sa ya cha chi mo shi bu re de la yi yi na yang su su nyam ne che ba la Tang bu tang zin di le sop ta ma zi na gom zi cha ba yi na ngasu gom di san zambu li la gom la pe gawur wa Sa ma le ka che la che ne tang che ba yi zan gom la gawur Gom di la gom ji te ya la Chan ju ki sim ta to nyi ta wa yi ngo di gom ji te ba yi na An ngasu cha chi mo shi bu cha gero ji bu cha chi mo Ani nikap tartu kari yina. Tang zin ta jin zin la ma nyo ni gom zi jawa yina. Dene cha chi yu ti zo gyam shik dewa. Angu ti zo be po tuk tuk se dewa zamik zun tuk tuk se ne. Ka ha dea la za chin bu zi go na. Ani tun zho tiri ma bu. Tak pa ka ka de go re. Chogu jya zan ni ka ha dea de gdewa. Di je ko di zu di. Ya wa ma bu zi che ni ro dea ma do. Yaya ya chue zo ya di ye chang chup la ya ji Tuan ta yong su zo bu ha go na Mo ne ko wa zo ya di da Nyang di zo ya lok zo ma jik ka ni di si ji ya jik dang Tua yi tam da da nga zo be za chin bu re si la ni Di zo de yi tam di zo za chin bu la ya di chilu la yo ma ra wa nang ye Mo ne da si mi ra ji yo se ba di ka ni di si yong su zo ba zi jie ya yo ri De ha yang Mo ne cha ni tiong ba che ma ding jue che ma nyam yung che ma nga ni di si jie ya ma do Dindri ke Tarso uro ta mong di che ne Ani si jinsar khonsar tiri ma ru wa Ma su tan ta pe re zi ne jinsar khonsar si Zha chen bo zi re si la wa yi na O di tira mi Chi 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 re sha tira pe ning ba re sha si ki do Zha chen bo shu zi ki do De na nga su nyumo te zha chen shu zi da Tho ma me ba ni yu re Tira bi ya ma ng sa yu re Kuk ta kan ri mindu yi nga su Che sa Um Kandula was saying that uh, uh, when you hear this word about, uh, you know, the samsara and the, the uh, nirvana being the same taste, um, so I was laughing because uh, different people take a different, you know, um, text on that. Um, this is because, again, I'm going back to um, the uh, discussion on looking at, you know, our ordinary perceptions. And then uh, looking at the realities, the actual, you know, the realistic, uh, you know, the realities, they really differ a lot. And uh, um, when people talk about, you know, like uh, um, these very profound, you know, teachings, uh, such as uh, uh, inseparability of uh, samsara and nirvana, um, because uh, people take it differently. And so um, it's not, you know, really uh, doesn't make sense until, um, ourselves really knows you know uh, where uh, we get and what we're talking about 
Um, so for example, um, for myself and maybe for others here, um, before reaching to these very advanced you know, teachings, um, I think it's uh, much more beneficial. Um, really first tackle the self grasping mind, you know, this really fixation on looking at, you know, like a, a self-produced uh, entity and so on. And really try to deal with this uh, um, confused state of the mind, ignorance, um, because which really propels and you know, brings a self cherishing thought. And uh, um, uh, it really started working on the uh, conventional and the ultimate, you know, um, the truth. Um, if you do that, um, I think then um, this will have a much better or, you know, much, you know, impactful uh, result for us. Really think about, as I said, you know, what is, you know, the bodhicitta, the body, and the, the looking all the qualities in that, you know, body, in Tibetan, they split the, you know, body or the, uh, call the term with the chang chup, what is the meaning of the chang, what is the meaning of the chup, which is, you know, especially called for, you know, uh, Body, and they didn't really uh, study and have a good understanding about the emptiness. Uh, to do that, is really start a hearing, teaching, study, and practice, and do contemplations and meditation. And as you continue practicing, and they start with real effort, you know, you kind of doing this uh, effort, you know, like a, uh, things that involve effort. And as you really become, uh, you know, um, fluent in these practices. And then, you know, these practices, you know, become effortless. And uh, when you get there, and then uh, as you further progress through the understanding and, you know, the deeper realization of the emptiness, you will start appreciating and have a deeper understanding about the clear light, you know, of mind or, uh, and so on. And uh, especially this union of the emptiness and bliss or, you know, union of appearances and emptiness so on. Um, you will really uh, then have a the true um, the understanding about these experiences, and uh, um, with that kind of a practices, when you engage in the practice of a yidam, the uh, daily yoga, right? And because you have this, uh, you know, incredible realization, um, these foundations, and then you know the uh, ordinary, you know, uh, the perceptions and extraordinary perceptions, so on. When you hear the word, you will understand. You see, you can see the differences, um, and you and so for to do that first, really to recognize this, you know, ignorance, the maripa, the confused state of the mind, and to look at the nature of this self-grasping mind, and then you know see, um, you know, uh, how this really self-grasping mind propels us in this, you know, state of confusion. And leading us, you know, actions and emotions, um, and that's you know result in many negative uh, the consequences. And once you really have a true understanding about this, how the self grasping mind works, and with the practice on emptiness and so on, clearing this, you know, self grasping, like remove the stain, then you start experiencing this clear light mind experiences, right? You start experiencing this emptiness and bliss. And uh, um, then through the working with the, uh, the techniques in the generation stage and then the uh, techniques in the completion stage, um, which will further enable you to, you know, dissolve and uh, enable you to abandon these, you know, the stands, uh, such as, you know, stands produced by the uh, Maripa um, ignorance. And as you progress further, and then you can really see what it meant in the Mahamudra and in the doctrine. Um, the uh, pure, you know, perceptions. What it meant in the Mahamudra, but the inseparability uh, between samsara and the nirvana. You will see. So it's not as easy as we're kind of intellectually taught. But this is something you study, and not only study, but really meditate and practice, and have the realization by yourself. And once you really following these kind of steps. And reaching to the perfect state, or the you know, um, and where you're able to appreciate and incorporate these profound teachings from the Vajra, um, Vajrayana teachings, you know, these unions of you know different we talked about, and then when you see that union, then it's very different union that we think now. The one you think, oh, you know, now you know the 
the teaching says this and it's actually very different. Um, the difference is when you really study practice and experience that in a realization versus something you merely hear through kind of a teaching, it, it differs a lot. And uh, um, so that's why um, I'm you know, really urging you, um, really look at this, you know, the bodhicitta, the practice of the bodhicitta, the correct view, the emptiness, and look at the, you know, like uh, um, the power of the compassion, love and kindness as an aid to these practices. And when you do that, then your practices become meaningful. I always joke that if we don't practice, uh, you know, meditations guided by our wisdom, and then we are diff we are no longer different from uh, animals. You know, the birds, like the pigeons, you know, they can sit perfectly for hours without moving. The animals have this excellent quality of not talking. <laughs> but can you say they, you know, good practitioners is really hard. And uh, so whether you do, you know, the uh, yidam practices, you know, inscribed in the Vajra uh, Yana teachings, or whether you really practice this uh, bodhicitta uh, set out in the, uh, you know, Sutiyana trainings, it's very important to guide it by this correct wisdom. And once you integrate that, you know, uh, wisdom, then you will start experiencing, wow, you know, Buddha is a limitless, when we used to talk about, you know, the the um, Buddha is a limitless, the Buddha's teaching is a limitless, and so on. Because, you know, it's guided by wisdom, then you will appreciate the wisdom. If not, if you think, you know, everything, you know, it's like a long history, old, if you consider everything the old as, you know, precious, look at the museum, they have uh, so many, you know, objects, goes back to a thousand years. But then, what does that mean? Nothing. But guided by, you know, uh, wisdoms, and then when you talk about the teachings, the long traditions, yes, they're meaningful, because there's some wisdom that we can incorporate in our practices and gain something out of it. So, Never Tony Tony um, so, as I said, uh, if there is a something you're really looking for, the most powerful practices, what is the most profound practices? It is the practice of a bodhicitta, the practice of emptiness. Um, the practice of Mahamudra and Dzogchen, and also the union of the uh, um, appearances and emptiness, so on. Yes, they are profound practices, but without the um, appreciation and the, a good ground on the practice of bodhicitta and emptiness, they may not be uh, most effective. But once you have a true you know, understanding and appreciation about the uh, practice of the bodhicitta, the uh, emptiness, uh, the union of emptiness and the uh, uh, compassion. And um, then if you engage in the practice of the yidam, the deity yogas, they become very powerful. 
And when we think about the deity yogas, you know, we see the deities arise and their embodiment of our compassion and emptiness. This very, you know, the, um, you know, the realm of the, you know, uh, the uh, deity yoga is really the essence of our realization of emptiness and compassion. So the emptiness and compassion that, you know, experiences that we have, and they are manifested into this deity yoga, because you are talking about deity yoga. And when you really have this at that level of, you know, a practice of deity yoga, uh, which is inseparable from your true realization of uh, uh, emptiness and uh, compassion. And then that, you know, the deity yoga, the deity, you know, which really the embodiment of that, it's become, again, limitless, it's a pervasive, um, it's, you know, manifestative. And uh, it's, uh, uh, everything's possible, you know, the um, unthinkable is uh, extraordinary experiences because there's no limit uh, for this very experience of the deity yoga because it's, you know, encompasses with the compassion and the emptiness and so you know it's uh, it's like a self-liberating because you know the essence of that deity yoga you're practicing is incorporated and integrated your practice of emptiness and compassion so it's kind of uh, becoming self-liberating and uh, um, so that's what is the you know really the value of a practicing uh, bodhicitta um, even you know integrating them with your deity yoga practices uh, with you know some of the most advanced you know the practices such as mahamudra and the doctrine um, how you know the practice of a bodhicitta makes them most impactful um, so with that you know i'm so fortunate to uh, discuss with you about this most precious the most really essential teaching um, which is the bodhicitta with you and having this opportunity I wanted to really thank for everyone giving me this opportunity and for you guys coming here and discuss this with me. And so I wanted to say thank you all and Tashi Delek. Mm. <laughs> Simjia Tamji, Chanju Sim, Tony Dava, Java Show, Tianda, and Zambling Dinner, Nemu Tutu, Mayonga, and Narin Devala, and Pe, Nem, Tizuyi, Pe, Missy, and Zambling Nana, Kucha Chimbo, Tunguri, Mizu Shidonia Ina, Tene, Sachimbo, Ludin, Tobiada, Tene, the young Jar Dinda with the Tani Mayonga, Madame Jaya, and the Kang Dara Tanda, Mongu, Chia the Chijin, but to Tama Loiji. Chinese,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁,清洁
we wanted to share on this you know planet um, really uh, dedicate this for the peace in this world um, you know looking at the tragedies that we you know experience in today's world and with the merit that we have uh, generated we dedicate for all the you know um, the ascension beings who are dying or who died result of this you know conflict that we experience um, that you know we pray and dedicate um, that uh, due to the power of our practice of a Buddha Chitta and the teaching tonight, uh, that all sentient beings really uh, born uh, or uh, come into contact with the Buddha Chitta. So this will enable them to transform them and to bring them to better life. And we pray those people who died or who are you know, dying in the conflict in today's world, that because of our practices, you know, may they really benefit from this and uh, by some kind of uh, karmic connections that in their next life, uh, instead of, you know, burning again in the conflict zones, but they really take birth in a kind of a form where Dharma is possible, where they can hear and practice the Bodhicitta. And with that, we also dedicate uh, our merit, the incredible amount of the merit that we have generated for the longevity of all, you know, mm, teachers regardless of their certain religion all you know just like uh, um, the teachers uh, who are uh, bringing peace who are guiding people and who are really benefiting countless ancient beings may they live long and uh, we pray not only the you know uh, people who are practitioners uh, you know benefit from our practices even you know the most kind of uh, um, the sinful uh, or most kind of wrongful uh, individuals, may they benefit from our, you know, uh, teaching and may they be awakened, may they come in contact with the Bodhicitta through the practice of the Bodhicitta, they get opportunity uh, to transform and better, uh, 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 get a better life. And so that, you know, uh, is what, you know, dedication we should uh, do tonight. And this will be the after benefit uh, for others that are what we have been doing tonight. Um, I'm going to also uh, recite a prayer for um, the uh, emptiness and uh, um, compassion, the union to generate and develop uh, the union of emptiness and uh, compassion for all beings. I'm going to recite that prayer. Sanjo, Zemjo, Rimbo, Je, Maje, Bana, Jeju, Jewa, and Yamba, Meva, Kuni, Kundu, Peva, Shu. Jerram Sanjay Tobin, Junjuru, Jay, Pama, Simjan, Tamjay, Dedan, 
年初当街大多中秋，前秋三八康乐四秋，带他跟姐妈郎住九日街，姐娃跟他养大喇嘛，姐妹去街拜了龙君，撒旦郎姐也带着走，多姐抢街狂暴女儿多秀，多年年节送到九百。姐姐现在看见点着个小那边么？点子家子，昨晚的昨天的那着秀，多年年节送的。姐姐现在看见点着个小那边么？点子家子，昨晚的昨天的那着秀，多年年节送的酒杯。姐姐身子干净，点点干，吃那白毛点子家做，说完的时候，土爷爷没说，等把几点看中就把他，等把你也先到手，点子不能先到，等把爷，等把爷爷那边再细数。六年郎中也没老一个，俺那这东哥没长辈，一年得东就是没多少钱多，留下对女人这细数，别当做满哥把一些老婆把上，身边热娃工作把上班准备这细数，这些你们得来挣，你们供养得来接，你们在打头得来。昆曲、宋剧、扎西曲，干嘛惹人骂？没当军嘛是不去，没能落当真大夫，对些全能得得了当。多谢谢 ，Thank you。